aboard the Hogwarts Express. There was a definite... So, sorry, chapter 11. There was a definite end of the holiday gloom in the air when Harry awoke next morning. Heavy rain was still splattering against the window as he got dressed in jeans and a sweatshirt. They would change into their school robes on the Hogwarts Express. He, Ron, Fred, and George had just reached the first floor landing on their way down to breakfast when Mrs. Weasley appeared at the foot of the stairs, looking harassed. Arthur, she called up the, the staircase. Arthur, urgent message from the ministry. Harry flattened himself against the wall as Mr. Weasley came clattering past his, with his robes on back to front and hurtled out of sight. When Harry and the others entered the kitchen, they saw Mrs. Weasley rummaging anxiously in the dresser drawer. I've got a quail here somewhere, said Miss, and Mr. Weasley, bending over the fire, talking to. Harry shut his eyes hard and opened them again to make sure that they had that they were working properly. Amos Diggory's head was sitting in the middle of the flames like a large bearded egg. It was talking very fast, completely unperturbed by the sparks flying around it and the flames licking its ears. Muggle neighbours heard bangs and shouting, so they went and called those what you call them please men. Arthur, you've got to get over there. Here, said Mrs. Weasley breathlessly, pushing a piece of parchment, a bottle of ink, and crumpled quill into Mr. Weasley's hands. "'It's a real stroke of luck I heard about it,' said Mr. Diggory's head. "'I had to come into the office early to send a couple of owls, and I found the improper use of magical lot all setting off. If Rita Skeeter gets hold of this one, Arthur, what does Mad Eye say happened?' asked Mr. Weasley, screwing the ink bottle, loading up his quill and preparing to take notes. Mr. Diggory's head rolled his eyes, says he heard an intruder in his yard, says they were mm. they were creeping towards the house, but they were ambushed by his dustbins. What, the what did the dustbins do? asked Mr. Weasley, scribbling frantically. Made one hell of a noise and fired rubbish everywhere, so as I can tell, said Mr. Diggory. Apparently, one of them was still rocketing around when the police men turned up. Mr. Weasley groaned. And what about the intruder, Arthur? You know, Mad Eye, said Mr. Diggory's head, rolling its eyes again. Someone creeping into his yard at the dead of night. More likely there was a very shell-shocked cat wandering around somewhere, covered in potato peelings. But if the improper use of magic lot got get their hands on Mad Eye, he's had it. Think of his record. We've got to get him off on a minor charge. Something in your department. What about exploding, what are exploding dustbins worth? Might be a caution, said Mr. Weasley, still writing very fast, his brow furrowed. Mad Eye didn't use his wand. He didn't actually attack anyone. I'll bet he leapt out of bed and started jinxing everything he could reach through the window, said Mr. Diggory. But they'll have a job proving it. There aren't any casualties. All right, I'm off, Mr. Weasley said, and he stuffed the parchment into his, his notes and with his notes on it into his pocket and dashed out the kitchen again. Mr. Diggory's head looked around at Mrs. Weasley. Sorry about this, Molly, it said more calmly, bothering you so early and everything, but Arthur's the only one who can get Mad Eye off, and Mad Eye's supposed to be starting his new job today. Why he had to choose last night? Never mind, Amos, said Mrs. Weasley. Sure you won't have a bit of toast or anything before you go? Oh, go on then, said Mr. We Mr. Diggory. Mrs. Weasley took a, t a piece of buttered toast from a stack on the table, kitchen table and put it into fire tongs and transferred it into Mr. Diggory's mouth. Franks, he said in a muffled voice, and then, with a small pop, vanished. Harry could hear Mr. Weasley calling hurried voices, hurried goodbyes to Bill, Charlie, Percy, and the girls. Within five minutes, he was back in the kitchen, his robes in the, on the right way now, dragging a comb through his hair. I'd better hurry. You have a good turn, boys, said Mr. Weasley to Harry, Ron, and the twins, dragging a cloak over his shoulders and preparing to disapparate. Molly, are you going to be all right taking the kids to King's Cross? Of course I will, she said. You just look after Mad Eye. We'll be fine. Mr. We As Mr. Weasley vanished, Bill and Charlie entered the kitchen. Did someone say Mad Eye? Bill asked. 
What's he been up to now? He says someone's tried to break into his house last night, said Mrs. Weasley. Mad Eye Moody, said George thoughtfully, spreading marmalade on his toast. Isn't he a nutter? Isn't he that nutter? Your father thinks very highly of Mad Eye Moody, said Mrs. Weasley sternly. Yeah, well, Dad collects plugs, doesn't he? said Fred quietly, as Mrs. Weasley left the room. Birds of a feather. Moody was a great wizard in his time, said Bill. He's an old friend of Dumbledore's, isn't he? said Charlie. Dumbledore's not what you'd call normal, though, is he? said Fred. I mean, I know he's a genius and everything. Who is mad I? asked Harry. He's retired. Used to work at the ministry, said Charlie. I met him once when Dad took me into work with him. He had an aura. He was an aura. One of the best. A dark wizard catcher, he added, seeing Harry's blank look. Half the cells in Azkaban are full because of him. He makes... He made himself loads of enemies, though. The families of people he caught, mainly. And I heard he's been getting really paranoid in his old age. Doesn't trust anyone anymore. Sees dark wizards everywhere. Bill and Charlie decided to come and see everyone off at King's Cross Station. But Percy, apologizing most profusely, said that he really needed to get to work. I just can't justify taking more time off at the moment. He told them Mr. Crouch is really starting to rely on me. Yep. You know what, Percy? said George seriously. I reckon he'll know your name soon. Mrs. Weasley had braved the telephone in the village post office to order three ordinary muggle taxis to take them to London. Arthur tried to borrow ministry, ca ministry calls for us, Mrs. Weasley whispered to Harry as they stood in the rain washed yard, watching the taxi drivers heaving six heavy Hogwarts trunks into their cars. But they weren't continued to spare. Oh dear, they don't look happy, do they? Harry didn't like to tell Mrs. Weasley that muggle taxis rarely transported overexcited owls and Pidwidgeon was making an ear-splitting racket. Nor did it help that a number of Dr. Filibuster's fabulous wet start no-heat fireworks went off unexpectedly when Fred's trunk sprang open, causing the driver carrying it to yell with fright and pain as Crookshanks clawed it his way to the man's leg. The journey was uncomfortable, owing to the fact that they were jammed in the back of the taxis with their trunks. Crookshanks took quite a while to recover from the fireworks, and by the time they entered London, Harry, Ron, and Hermione were all se severely scratched. They were very relieved to get out of at King's Cross, even though the rain was coming down harder than ever, and they got soaked carrying their trunks across the busy road and into the station. Harry was used to getting out onto Platform 9 and 3 quarters by now, it was a simple matter of walking straight through the apparently solid barrier dividing platforms 9 and 10. The only tricky part was doing it in an unobtrusive way so as to avoid attracting muggle attention. They did it in groups today, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, the most conspicuous, as they were accompanied by Pidwig. Pig, Widgeon, and Crookshanks went first. They leant, leant carefully against the barrier, chatting unconcernedly, and slid sideways through it. And as they did so, Platform 9 and 3 quarters materialized in front of them. The Hogwarts Express, a gleaming star scarlet steam engine, was already there, clouds of, of steam billowing from it. The witch through which many of the Hogwarts students and parents at the platform appeared like dark ghosts. Pigwidgeon became noisier than ever in response to the hooting of many owls through the mist. Harry, Ron, and Hermione set off to find seats, and were soon stowing their luggage in a compartment halfway along the train. They then hopped back down onto the platform to say goodbye to Mrs. Weasley, Bill, and Charlie. Might be seeing you all sooner than you think, said Charlie, grinning, as he hugged Ginny goodbye. Why, said Fred keenly. <coughs> You'll see, said Charlie. Just don't tell Percy I mentioned it. It's classified information until such time as the Ministry seems fit to release it, after all. Yeah, I sort of wish I was back at Hogwarts this year, said Bill, hands in his pockets, looking almost wistfully at the train. Why, said George impatiently. You're going to have an interesting year, said Bill, his eyes twinkling. I might even get time off to come and watch a bit of it. A bit of what, said Ron. But at that moment, the whistle blew and Mrs. Weasley 
shivied them towards the train doors. Thanks for having us to stay, Mrs. Weasley, said Hermione, as they climbed on board, closed, closed the door and leant out, leaned out the window to talk to her. Yeah, thanks for everything, Mrs. Weasley, said Harry. Oh, it was my pleasure, dears, said Mrs. Weasley. I'd invite you for Christmas, but, well, I expect you're going to want to you're all going to want to stay at Hogwarts, but with one thing or another. Mum, said Ron irritably, what do you three know that we don't? You'll find out this evening, I expect, said Mrs. Weasley, smiling. It's going to be very exciting, mind you. I'm very glad that they've changed the rules. What rules, said Harry, Ron, Fred and George together. I'm sure Professor Dumbledore will tell you. Now, behave, won't you? Won't you, Fred? And you, George? The pistons hissed loudly and the train began to move. Tell us what's happening at Hogwarts, Fred bellowed out the window as Mrs. Weasley, Bill and Charlie sped away from them. What rules are they changing? But Mrs. Weasley only smiled and waved. Before the train had rounded the corner, she, Bill and Charlie had disapparated. Harry, Ron and Hermione went back to their compartment. The thick rain splattered on the windows made it very difficult to see out of them.